Why are buildings made of steel? Strong, light, and flexible steel frames offer many advantages over wood and concrete, especially where skyscrapers are concerned. Steel makes big buildings relatively light, with tremendous load-bearing capacity. The upper floors won't crush the floors beneath them, and steel holds up better to weather and fire. Most skyscrapers are built on steel or concrete frames, which is a grid of columns and beams that goes all the way through the building. The World Trade Center was different. It was what engineers call a tube structure. It was a very, very strong mesh of steel that surrounded the exterior. Inside, there was the core, a rectangle of 47 columns made of four-inch thick steel at the base, thinning with increasing height. The cores combined might with ingenuity, anchoring the towers and allowing them to flex. Look at the size of this steel. Solid, prefabricated floor assemblies, welded metal floor pans placed on top of trusses, both welded and bolted to the vertical frames. The story we were told, this rock-like steel grid gave way because fire warped the trusses, causing the bolts to fail. As the trusses sagged and fell, the floors dropped with them. In its 2002 documentary, Why the Towers Fell, PBS creates a video model. Once the trusses failed, the floors they were holding cascade down with a force too great to be withstood. The result is what's called a progressive collapse, as each floor pancakes down onto the one below. What remains standing? The tall, indestructible core. Why does PBS fail to explain the complete disappearance of the Twin Towers' cores? The official story's central thesis is based on heat, temperatures high enough to weaken steel. But people in the towers did not report such heat. Think about it. Neither steel, concrete, nor glass can burn. So what in those buildings could have burned to make such heat? How do these firefighters describe the collapse of the North Tower? We started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was, like, it was if, if they had detonated. Yeah, yeah, they were planning yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching it and running. And others give similar descriptions. At 10.30, I tried to leave the building. But as soon as I got outside, I heard a second explosion and another rumble, and more smoke, and more dust. And then a fire marshal came in and said we had to leave because if there was a third explosion, this building might not last. Like, it sounded like gunfire. You know, bang, 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 bang. And then, and then all of a sudden, three big explosions. We started walking down the stairs, we made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like, it, it, to me, it sounded like an explosion, but it was a huge explosion. Chief Albert Turry told me that he was here after the events that took place this morning. He tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place. And then an hour after, there was another explosion in one of the towers here. So according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. Reports of bombs in the buildings, explosions. A CBS reporter to Dan Rather. But I was coming um, toward the World Trade Center looking for CBS crews and asked a firefighter if I, he saw any. All of a sudden, there was a roll, an explosion, and we could see coming at us a ball of flame stories high. Listen to the sound of a large explosion right before the South Tower begins to fall. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, everybody. Sound reaches us after what we see. 
If the boom we just heard was the sound of the building collapsing, it would follow the collapse. Instead, the boom is heard before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bring it back. Let's consider the characteristics of steel. Steel is an alloy of iron containing added carbon for flexibility, workability, and strength. In the days of old, blacksmiths heated iron till it was red and pounded it for hours to form it. Horseshoes, knife blades, and plowshares were typical creations. Steel was introduced in the mid-1800s and by the end of the century, with the advent of the blast furnace, found widespread commercial use. A blast furnace is known as a controlled environment. High temperatures are reached as oxygen is pumped into a closed space. How and when does steel melt? Steel melts at temperatures of 2750 degrees Fahrenheit and above, attained only in a blast furnace or when a powerful incendiary such as thermite is used. Steel or any substance that is burned will never become hotter than the temperature of the fire or heat applied to it. An open air hydrocarbon fire reaches a maximal temperature of some 1200 degrees Fahrenheit in a dirty or uncontrolled burn characterized by red-orange flames. Red-orange flames are what we saw on September 11th. Even the fireball caused by the plane strike was red-orange. A controlled burn falls between a dirty burn like a fireplace and a controlled environment, the blast furnace. A controlled burn employs a regulated mix of air and fuel, an example being your gas stove or the engine in your car. You can fire up your gas stove all day long, making soup, roasting a duck, or simmering a stew. Made of steel, your stove will not melt, and nor will your pots and pans. This is a kerosene heater designed for use in any ordinary house. The heater runs on jet-grade kerosene contained in this tank. Made of steel, the heater can operate all night and all day. The kerosene fumes ignite and burn inside it, never causing even the smallest part of this heater to weaken or melt. Yet we were led to believe that these tremendous buildings, framed in steel and surfaced in aluminum, totally collapsed from small scattered fires and 90 minutes of smoke. Take note of these hurtling beams thrown laterally outward as the tower comes to earth. Would fire have the strength to eject such huge hunks of metal? MIT engineering professor Thomas Eager's 2001 paper is officially considered the academic standard for explaining the World Trade Center collapses. In it, he tells us that steel loses half its strength at 650 degrees Celsius and that the fires that day did not get much hotter than this. He stresses, however, that the fires did not burn evenly. It was the uneven temperatures that caused the steel to deform and some of the floors to fail. These falling floors brought down the whole building. While it was impossible for the fuel-rich diffuse flame fire to burn at a temperature high enough to melt the steel, its quick ignition and intense heat caused the steel to lose at least half its strength and to deform, causing buckling or crippling. This weakening and deformation caused a few floors to fall, while the weight of the stories above them crushed the floors below, initiating a domino collapse. In plain language, straight from MIT, 